So what I was trying to get in the talk is that no new management process is going to solve that crisis. What that crisis is the problem with is everybody have a different ideology, a different set of values about what Bitcoin is about. What attracted me to Bitcoin when I saw it is something that said Bitcoin is peer-to-peer -peer money that cannot be controlled by banks or central governments. That's something that spoke really clearly to me. What we have to understand is that in today's world, people work jobs they absolutely hate, they know has absolutely no meaning or purpose whatsoever. People work their whole lives to earn money, which is literally a number in a, in a central bank that is controlled by a financial elite. That's a really sinister form of mass conscription of labor, of enslaving a population economically. The people dedicate their entire lives to earn money, which is, has no value whatsoever. So now there are a lot of cryptocurrency projects and everybody's going, oh yeah, we're going to make this thing and we're going to make that thing. And when, we, when you really try to ask people, okay, but what is it that we're trying to do? People can't really give real life use cases. They're like, yeah, well, you know, we're going to find what is going to be useful, but it's, it's really cool. And that's what I meant by people getting dazzled by technology, by modernity. Rather than trying to understand what is the problems, like big problems facing society, and how we use the technology to, uh, to in support those goals. So Bitcoin, as a project, it's not about making payments smoother. It's not about having a new form of currency for rich Westerners. Bitcoin is a project about challenging the power of central banks. A power which is used to, to maintain a huge state apparatus system, a military industrial complex, which enslaves the whole of humanity. The very sinister thing that we live under. That is the purpose of Bitcoin. So where does this debate come from? Well, there was one group of guys that they really, that they really believed that Bitcoin needs to get capital, needs to get accepted by the system, by uh, by financial industry, by big banks and governments and states. And so what they wanted to do is they wanted to work with legislators to try and find ways to make Bitcoin to fit the legacy financial system. But what they didn't realize is that technology is a social system. Bitcoin is not an abstract object that exists in space, immutable. That's why I tried to show with, with the example of Ethereum. Ethereum had a project which advertised itself as code that was immutable, that it couldn't be changed. But then it got hacked, and they changed the code. And that was when we realized it's a social system. These are systems influenced by people inside of them. We have the miners, the developers, the users, many different groups of people. And they have ideologies that drive them. And it's undeniable that Bitcoin is driven by a free market ideology of wanting to liberate ourselves from the central banks. Uh, where, and and this group of people, the Bitcoin Foundation, they, were, they say, okay, no, Bitcoin is a system, it's incorruptible. Without seeing, okay, no, by this process of assimilation, what we do is we allow Bitcoin as a system to evolve in a direction that it lose its core values as a project. It gain a different set of values. They, they thought that Bitcoin can go inside of the system, infect it from within, and change everything without seeing that actually Bitcoin itself would change. And this other group of people are very committed to their ideals of Bitcoin as a tool to challenge the power of central banks. So that is where the block size debate came from, from one group of people who believed in Bitcoin as a, as a tool, as a payments innovation. I mean, that's what the Bitcoin Foundation called their 2013 conference was, was Bitcoin payments innovation. Versus another group of people who see it as a revolutionary tool to transform the human society, to increase human freedom. That's where that divide comes from. It's a difference in ideology, a difference in values. We need to understand, like, what is it that we're doing as a group of people, not just do things randomly. We need to do it towards something. We need to have a long-term perspective, a long-term vision. And that vision needs to be connected to the world we live in.